My message this morning is a, u- a unique one. It's called A Biblical Look at Satan in Bible Prophecy. You say, Brother Perkins, why are you going to talk about the devil? Because the devil's in the scriptures, and God wants to help you this morning. So I want you to bow your hearts as we ask the Lord to bless his word. Father, we love you. As always, Father, it's a privilege and an honor, first and foremost, as we stand before you, the creator of all life, our holy God. We worship and we thank you. Lord, it's a privilege as well to stand before your people this morning. And Lord, I ask this morning by your Holy Spirit, I ask that you would open the scriptures to our hearts. Remove fear, remove, uh, remove confusion regarding the devil. Lord, expose the enemy today. And Lord, let us see his end through the scriptures. Now, Lord, we thank you this day. And again, we come against every scheme of the enemy that would try to hinder this word. Lord, I pray that this message fall upon a good ground in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. A biblical look at Satan in Bible prophecy. Now you say, Brother Perkins, why do you have this red, uh, this cartoon-looking devil? Well, most time you see the devil, he's all menacing and, and just bring fear. Well, I didn't want to show you a devil like that because what I want you to understand, now the devil is real. He is, uh, he is menacing. Uh, but you know, you don't have to be afraid of the devil as a born-again believer. And we're going to allow the word of God to, to help us today. And again, you don't have to be afraid of the devil or afraid of this message. Now, I'm a topical teacher. I'm going to give you a number of topics today. I'm going to define who is Satan. We're going to see who created Lucifer. Then I'm going to give you some names the Bible gives in reference to Satan. Then we'll look at how did Lucifer fall and become Satan? How did it happen? Then we'll look at how do we defeat Satan in our lives? Every Christian here, you can defeat the devil, and I'm going to show you how based on the word of God. Then we're going to close up my favorite part of this study, looking at Satan's demise in the script. We're going to see the devil's demise. I shared in the first service that uh, before I became a prophecy teacher, uh, I was a Christian, but I was afraid to go into the book of Revelation. And the reason being because when I was younger, I was taught that you should never study the book of Revelation. I was taught as in church. And I, taught, I was taught that if you go to church and you, and you start reading the book of Revelation or studying it, you could lose your mind. So I didn't want to lose my mind, so I didn't go into the book of Revelation. <laughs> but what I found out later on when the Lord called me to this area of, of teaching Bible prophecy, I found out that that was a lie from the devil. The devil did not want me to know his end. And we're going to see today the devil's end that's locked in the book of Revelation. We're going to see that. But we're going to look at uh, uh, a biblical look at him. Now, who is Satan? So we're going to look at Satan. I'm going to quote here uh, Billy Graham. Listen to what he says. He says, don't think of Satan as a harmless cartoon character with a red suit and a pitchfork. He is very clever and powerful, and his unchanging purpose is to defeat God's plan at every turn, including his plans for your life. We don't see today that we have an enemy, an arch enemy out there. The devil does not care about you. He wants your demise. Uh, and again, the devil is not this red slicker suit devil. I mean, every devil picture I saw back in the day, he was in a red slicker suit and a pitchfork in his hand. As a matter of fact, how did this concept come into being? The concept of a red devil suit. The concept of a red devil seems to have been taken, taken, taken its appearance from the Greco-Roman pan. It was like, it was like a horned goat. Uh, Erling, uh, Erling Berlin helped to popularize the red horned devil in 1913 with a song at the Devil's Ball. From there, the character became an advertising icon for products like Underwood Devil Ham, uh, a fireworks company. Several different regiments or divisions or squadrons of the military. A lot of military guys like, like to have a devil on their shoulder. You know, we're the red devils or whatever. Uh, but th- it was a concept that became an icon. Uh, but again, this is really not the devil. Now, this picture you see here, uh, when I was 14 years old, uh, I actually saw this sitcom. Paramount uh, put this sitcom out. It's called The Poor Devil, starring uh, Sammy Davis Jr., now, uh, I want you to look at this. We're going to play about, about a minute of this little, this little sitcom. And I want you to watch Sammy Davis Jr. in hell. Get him to play it for us. 
Attention, all new arrivals to hell. Please have the pink, yellow, and green forms completely filled out. All new arrivals entering on seven-year contracts must have the aforementioned forms as well as notarized copies of contracts or documented proof thereof. Hello, furnace room. Sammy speaking. Sammy, this is Chelsea. Hi, baby. You remember the man that you've been watching? The one that you keep insisting is a hot prospect? Yeah. Well, I've got him here on the monitor, and you were right. Really? He's exactly what you've been waiting for. Can you come up right now? Oh, honey, if I come up there now and Lucifer catches me, I'm going to be in all kinds of trouble. Oh, honey, you can't get in more trouble than what you are right now. Come on up, Sammy. You're right. See ya. Isn't that amazing? Now, I was a 14-year-old kid, very impressionable. I wasn't saved. When I saw this movie, first thing I thought, man, when I go to hell, that's the job I want. I'm going to keep them coals of burning on them sinners, man. But you know something? That's a misconception. You know, the devil is not in hell, nor does he control any flame in hell. He can't turn it up. He can't turn it down. The devil is afraid of hell. And again, this, this motion picture, I mean, this, this sitcom was, was out there. A lot of people watched it. Here's another one. Some of you may have seen this one. Uh, Lucifer. This was another sitcom. Uh, Lucifer makes prime time. One commentator said that the masses are increasingly obsessed with evil. So why not make a program glorifying Satan? You might say that Hollywood has done that for decades and featured uh, featured their offerings to the evil one on the big screen. And you would be correct. But this program will be prime time, available to millions with just a push of the remote. Satan, disguised as Mr. Nice Guy, will come leaping into the family rooms of millions of unsuspecting people, and uh, p uh, particularly into the minds of impressionable young people. Now, this sitcom was amazing here because... They show Satan, he left hell, he went to Los Angeles, and he, he, uh, he opened up a nightclub. And the devil, you know, these demons were trying to come to him to get him to come back to hell to torment people, which was a total lie. The devil has nothing to do with hell, and we're going to see that today, uh, other than it's a judgment of God. We're going to see that. Now, who is Satan according to the scriptures? I'm going to give you a number of scriptures today. I would encourage you to write these verses down. Jesus talking here in John chapter 8, verses 43 and 44. He said, why dost thou not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Jesus said, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will ye do. For he is, or he was, a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The scriptures tell us a lot about the devil. Satan is a liar. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth. This is what the scripture tell us about the devil. Here's another one, John 10, 10. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but, to, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So here the scripture tells us the devil is a thief. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Listen, the devil is not your friend. A lot of people play with the devil. Listen, get as far away from the devil as you can. He cannot be trusted. He's a liar. Look at this one. John chapter 12, verse 31. Now is this judgment now is, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Now here, Jesus called the devil the prince of this world. Now he's the prince and he's cast out. If you notice, that's a lowercase uh, p there. He's not the prince. Jesus is the prince of princes. Jesus is the prince of peace. 
Satan is the prince of this world, and he will be cast out. The judgment is already set for him. Look at this one, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Peter wrote, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Here, Peter calls devil, the devil, our adversary, and that he is as a roaring lion. Now, he's not a roaring lion, but he's as a roaring lion, and he's walking about seeking whom he may devour. This lets us know that Satan cannot devour everybody. And I'm going to help you today, Christian. You do not have to be afraid of the devil. You don't have to be afraid of the enemy. Uh, I made a statement this morning. The weakest Christian on his knees praying to God is stronger than any devil. And we're going to see that today. God wants you to, God wants you to understand your place. Now, I know some people are afraid to clap, man, because the devil might see me clapping. I don't want to clap at that. <laughs> By the end of this message, you're going to be clapping. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Look what Paul wrote. He says, in whom the God of this world, lowercase g, the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Here, Paul said that Satan is the God, lowercase g, the God of this world, and he blinds the minds of them that don't believe. You know, every one of us, before we became Christ, we were blinded by the devil. You know, I never saw the devil until I got saved. When I became a Christian, then I saw the devil. I saw how much, how much control he had in my life. When I got saved, I said, man, the devil had me. I was blinded to his works in my life. And many people are in that situation today. Look at this, Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 2. Paul wrote this. He said, wherein in time past... Ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince, lowercase again, lowercase p there, prince of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Here, the scripture reveals that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. It's also letting us know that Satan's kingdom is in the lower heavens. You know, Satan's kingdom is not in hell. Uh, I hear people say all the time, that came from the pit of hell. No, it didn't. Nothing comes from the pit of hell like that. People say, you know, I'm, I'm going to send you back to hell, devil. No, the devil's never been to hell. As a matter of fact, the devil is afraid of hell. Satan's kingdom is in the lower heavens. You remember when Daniel prayed back in the book of Daniel, and the Bible said that he prayed for 21 days. The scripture says immediately when Daniel prayed, God sent Gabriel to give, an, give him an answer. And the scripture says that the prince of Persia, this principality, this, uh, this uh, demonic angel uh, hindered Gabriel from bringing Daniel his answer. The Bible tells us that what God did, God dispatched Michael, the archangel, to go and war with the prince of Persia in order to release Gabriel to go and bring Daniel his answer. So Satan's kingdom as the prince of the air is in the lower heavens. He's not in hell. He's not running nothing from hell. It's a judgment of God. We're going to see it in a few minutes. God wants you to understand that. Now, who created Lucifer? The Bible is going to tell us something amazing. In the beginning, God created all good angels. All were holy and set apart for the work of God. But the scriptures go on to teach that there was an angelic rebellion in heaven headed by none other than Lucifer, the chief angel, the anointed cherub. Lucifer became so impressed with himself that he, uh, he wanted to overthrow God himself. Satan was created as a good angel. As a matter of fact, all the angels were created good. Satan was a perfect angel when God created him. Look at the text here found in, uh, found in uh, Exodus chapter 20, not Exodus, Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 14 and 15. The, Ezekiel, the prophet wrote, Thou art the anointed cherub, talking about, uh, talking about Lucifer. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. God says, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 15, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. When God made the devil, he was perfect in all his ways. He was a good angel. Till iniquity was found in him. 
You know, sin originated in the devil. Believe it or not, saints, angels have a will as well. God did not force the angels. I mean, angels have a will to do God's work or not. And there's a good case in point here. In heaven, Satan chose to disobey God. The scripture says iniquity was found in him. So I want to quote here uh, Dr. Ron Rhodes from Reasoning from the Scripture Ministry. Listen to what he says about this. He said, apparently, this represents the actual beginning of sin in the universe, uh, preceding, the fall, uh, preceding the fall of the human Adam by the indeterminate time. Sin originated in the free will of Lucifer, in which with full understanding of the issues involved, he, uh, he chose to rebel against the creator. The devil got caught up in himself. He got caught up in his beauty. I mean, the Bible tells us a lot about, about how he looked and everything, and he got caught up in himself, and he tried to overthrow God. It's like the, it's like the, it's like the, the, the clay jar trying to overthrow the, the potter who is making it and fashioning it. Why you put that, that thing on that? I don't like that. But, but the clay jar can't do that. This was Lucifer. He tried to overthrow God, and Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. That's how, that's, how, that's how God deals with sin in heaven. He purges it immediately. Look at this scripture. I love this. It's so powerful. This is 1 John 3, 8. 1 John 3, 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. I love this. The Bible says Satan sinned from the beginning. But Jesus was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Listen, if you're born again today and Jesus lives in you, guess what? You have the destroyer of the devil living in you. Listen, you got to understand your place and position. Now, the claps, they, they, they light. They, they're getting a little stronger. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. Look what Paul wrote. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is of no great thing if his ministers also transformed uh, as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So Satan is a deceiver. And you know something? You got you, you to gotta know, know the devil from the scripture, because if you know the scripture that talks about the enemy, you can, you can identify him. I can see the devil now. I see him every, I can see him. I see his hands. I, I can see him working. And, and the word of God helps me to identify the enemy in my life. And I can rebuke him out of my life. We're going to see as we go forward here. Now, let me give you some names given to the devil, given to Satan that's in Scripture. And again, it's good to know this. Look at this picture. I like this picture here. Here we have Satan. Uh, he's called the serpent. He's called the deceiver. He's called the accuser. He's called the, the dragon or the great red dragon of Revelation chapter 12. He's called the fallen angel. This is the devil. He's called Lucifer, the enemy. And again, the Bible's going to give us much more uh, scriptures in reference to him. So I'm going to start off with a verse here in Revelation chapter 20, verse number two. John wrote, and he laid and he laid hold on the, the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. We'll get to the latter part of the study. But here, an angel of God will be sent on assignment to bind Satan. But here... He's called the dragon. Uh, he's also called the dragon in chapter 12, Revelation. He's called the old serpent. The old serpent was the serpent in the garden. It's the same devil that tempted Adam and Eve. He's called the devil and Satan, the accuser of the brethren. These are four titles for the devil. Quoting from the, the track called Angels, What Do You Need to Know by Dr. Ron Rose, he's going to give us some different names and characteristics about the devil. And I'm going to give you these scriptures. These are good to note in your, in your notes. Uh, again, Satan, Revelation 12, 10, is called the accuser of the brethren. You know, Satan accused you day and night before God. When you fall, you make a mistake, you sin, the devil accused you before God. Not only before God, but he also accused you uh, to you. You know, uh, we make mistakes at times. Sometimes we sin, we fall. 
You ask God to forgive you, and when you do, God will forgive you. But you know something? That little voice over your shoulder telling you, you're not a Christian. I thought, you're not a Christian. If you was a Christian, you wouldn't have done that. You know something? That's not the voice of God condemning you. That's the accuser of the brethren. And you know something? You need to rebuke the devil. Devil, you are lying in the name of Jesus. The word of God says, if I sin, I confess my sins before God. The Bible says, Jesus in heaven, he's righteous and just to forgive me my sins. Put it under blood and move on and do the will of God. Don't listen to the accuser of the brethren because the devil will condemn you. He will, he will stomp you in the ground if you let him. He's called our adversary, 1 Peter 5, 8, an adversary. He, he's, he's an enemy out there. He's an adversary. He's not your friend. You can't play with the devil. He's called the devil, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. He's called our enemy, Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. Now, you got to know he's the enemy. He's not your friend. He's called the evil one. Everything about the devil is evil, 1 John 5, 19. You know, it's amazing to me, the people that play with the devil, don't play with the devil. You know, they were saying, you know, if, if you let Satan ride, he'll want to drive. Don't let him ride. If you let him ride, he'll want to drive. Don't let him ride. Kick him. Kick him out. Look at this one. He's called the father of lies. The Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 44. He's the father of lies. You know, when the devil tries to get you to lie, you listen to the father of lies, the creator of lies. The Bible says he, he's a liar. He can't tell the truth. The scripture said the devil, he cannot abode in the truth. He's called a murderer. John chapter 8, verse 44. He's also called as a roaring lion. We read this, 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. He's also called the tempter. Matthew chapter 4, verse 13. You know, the devil is a master tempter. You know, he won't tempt you the way he tempts me. But guess what? He knows how to tempt you. And the Bible tells us, you know, that we can escape every temptation that the enemy may bring toward us. Uh, but he's a master tempter. One of Satan's greatest assets in, a, in opposing the work of the Lord is, is his deceitfulness. Down through the centuries, he has posed in roles that have caused men to think of him in any other, uh, any way other than his true character, thus making it easier for him to lead them from God. You got to be very, very careful when you are out there and you're in your everyday uh, life. The enemy is forever. He, he's never resting to trip you up. So therefore, as a believer, we must be on guard uh, at all times, never, never let your guards down with the devil. Never take it easy in Zion because you have an enemy out there who's working overtime to bring shipwreck in your life. But guess what? You can have victory. We're going to see that. Now, how did Lucifer fall? How did it happen? What happened in the eons of eternity that called him to, caused him to fall? What does scripture tell us? Jesus said, he said, uh, he saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. After Lucifer's fall, Lucifer's fall from heaven, his name became Satan and his fallen angels became demons and spirits and fallen angels. The Gospel of Luke chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus gave the account and he said unto them, I beheld, as, uh, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. How did this fall happen? What did he do to cause it to happen? Well, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. The scripture reads, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How, hast thou, uh, thou cut, uh, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, here's Satan's problem, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. I will ascend above the heights of of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Satan's problem was pride. He got caught up in his beauty. He got caught up in his, in his majesty. And he felt that he can overthrow God. But the problem was he actually deceived some angels in, in following him. And all of them were cast out of heaven like a lightning bolt. He fell because of pride. And God judged him speedily. Now, 
How to defeat Satan. Every Christian, I want you to listen to the verse I'm about to give you because listen, every Christian, the weakest Christian on his knees is stronger than any devil. God has given you something that's going to really help you. In the gospel of Luke chapter 10, verse 18 and 19, Jesus said, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions. And he said, listen at this. And over every and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by no means hurt you. Jesus said, I give you power, believers, over all the power of the enemy. Listen, all you got to do is just fall on those knees. See, when the devil, when, you know, you know, when the devil brings, brings trouble to you, fall on your knees. That's the power of God. The devil can't stand it when you go on your knees. He, he don't want you to pray because you're praying for help from heaven. And guess what? Jesus said, I've given you power and authority. Look at this one. I love this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. Paul said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Now, this strength is not your strength. You're strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles. The wiles mean the trickery of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Listen, the scripture says, put on the whole armor of God. It says, stand strong in the power and might of the Lord. See, because you're a born again Christian, you have the might of God in you. And guess what? The devil understands authority. He really does. This is why the weakest Christian who prays and take authority over the devil, the devil has to move. Jesus said, I've given you authority over the works of the enemy. I've given you power over every power of the devil. You need to use your authority. You know, in my home, I rebuke the devil all the time. When the devil show up, I say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get out of my house. I do that. I don't put him with his mess. I don't put him with his mess. A lot of times... We allow the enemy to just come in and just wreak havoc in our house. You know, some Christian, you need to stop and stand on your spiritual authority and take authority over the devil. Satan, you will not have my family. Devil, you will not have my son, my daughter. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and I come cast you out of my house. You have authority as a believer. Jesus gives you power to do that. You will not have my son and my daughter. I rebuke this in their life. In the name of Jesus, Satan, get out. In my house, I say, Lord, I pray for the peace of God to rest in my home. I say, Lord, when people come to my house, I want them to feel the peace of heaven. And, you know, people come to my house, they say, you know, boy, I feel so peaceful here. I say, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, because I pray for the peace of God to rest in my house. I bind the works of the devil. I take authority over the devil. I'm not afraid of the devil. <laughs> Listen, Christian. I'm telling you from experience because, listen, God has given every one of us the same authority. Listen, just fall on your knees. The devil, the devil has to flee. He has to flee. Look at this, James 4, verse 6 through 8. James wrote, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Uh, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. He said here, resist the devil. See, the problem is we don't resist the devil. We just lay down to him. He come in and wreak havoc in your house, and you just, you just lay down. No, devil, you're a lie. This is going to stop now in Jesus' name. I rebuke this in Jesus' name. Lord, You've given me authority over this, and I bind the works of the devil in my house in Jesus' name. It works, saints, I'm telling you. Look at this, Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you believers today? You're born again believers, right? You're believers? Look what Jesus said. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Jesus said, in my name shall they cast out devils. 
They shall speak with new tongues. He said, if you're a believer in my name, you can cast out devils. Guess what? Jesus have given you authority to use his name. Have you ever seen a police jump right out in the middle of traffic and just stand up like that and traffic stop? They didn't stop because he's a little man, you know. They stopped because the power that's behind him. He can stop traffic by coming out of 18 wheelers. They see the badge on his chest. He has been given authority and he has, he has the government backing him up. Guess what? We have heaven backing us up. We got to stand in the authority that he's given us. You're a believer. He's given you this authority. Look at this. I love this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 and 12, the Bible talks here. It says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God for the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives until the death. Listen, you've been, a, you've been given authority by Christ to use his name. You've been, author, been given authority by the blood of Christ. You know, when, when, you know, when Satan tempted Jesus, you ought to read, them, read, those, read that whole story. When Satan tempted Jesus, what did Jesus do? Jesus used the word of God against the devil. The Bible says Satan did, and Jesus said, the scripture said, and the Bible says Satan fled for a season. Satan come, he tempted Jesus, Jesus said, the word of God says, and the devil had to flee. You know, the word the Bible says is the sword of the spirit. Whenever Satan came, Jesus pulled a sword of the spirit out. <laughs> the devil had to flee. Let me tell you something, saints. You have this authority given to you by God. And the devil knows he's afraid of the authority that Jesus has been given you. You have the badge of Jesus on you and the devil sees it, but you don't. Now, as we come coming down to a close here, we're going to see the demise of Satan in Scripture. This is my favorite part of the study because the Bible has prophesied the devil's end. Matthew 25, 41 says this, Then shall they say, then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, 41, Jesus is talking about uh, when he is going to judge the goat and sheep nations. At the end of, of Armageddon, the nations will be brought before him. He's going to judge the goat and sheep nations. Sheep nations will be allowed into the kingdom, the millennium. The goat nations he will judge. But he said, you will be cast into everlasting fire. This fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. You know, it was never God's will for man to go to hell in the beginning. But when Adam and Eve sinned, God had to accommodate the fall of man. Isaiah 5 says that hell have enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. God had to accommodate the fall of man. Well, hell was originally created for the devil, and guess what? His day is coming. So Satan will fall. Look at this, Isaiah 14, 15. It says, yet thou, talking about Satan, thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee, they that see Satan, those in hell, they're going to see Satan coming. They that see thee shall narrowly look at thee and, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that caused the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of the prisoners? The Bible says when Satan is cast into hell, the people, the inhabitants of hell, they're going to see the devil coming down. And they're going to say, is that the man that caused the earth to tremble? You mean to tell him I let that thing deceive me? Let me tell you, they're going to see him and they're going to narrow to look at him. But Satan is going to come, going to go to hell. The Bible says he opened not the house of his prisoners. The scripture says Jesus, he came on the scene. Isaiah said Jesus came to open the house of the prisoners. God's going to judge the devil. Revelation chapter 12 again, verses 7 through 9. This is at the mid part of the great tribulation. God is going to dispatch Michael the archangel to war against the devil. From chapter 12, we're going to see Satan will be on a downhill trajectory to God's judgment. Verse 7 of chapter 12, John wrote, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not. 
neither was there found, neither was there place found anymore in heaven or in Satan's lower heavens, in the lower perch. His kingdom is, was no longer allowed anymore. Chapter 12, mid part Revelation, he's cast from that perch. And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So what's going to happen here, at the time of the great tribulation, at the midpoint of the tribulation, Satan will be cast out. Now, we're going to see in a few minutes, after Satan is cast uh, from the midpoint of tribulation, God's going to dispatch an angel that's going to bind him in the bottomless pit. So I'm going to bring my chart in. This is our prophecy chart here. Now, you see this. We are currently in the church age. You see a little arrow there? Uh, right here is the midpoint of the seven-year tribulation, where at this point, Satan will be cast from his lower heavens to the earth. And the Bible said that he's coming down with great wrath because he knows that he's going to have a short time left. The devil knows that his days are winding up. From here, God is going to cast him into the bottomless pit. At the close of the seven-year tribulation, Satan will be cast into the bottomless pit for 1,000 years so he would have no influence to deceive mankind in the, millennial, in, in the millennial kingdom. Then God's going to release him for a season. Then he'll be cast into the lake of fire, the eternal home for the devil. This is the hell that God created for the devil and his angels. Satan, by the mid part of the tribulation, is on a downhill trajectory to judgment. And he didn't want you to know that. You know, so when the devil started messing with me, I started quoting these scriptures on the devil. I started reminding him of his end. And the devil has to flee. So look here at Revelation chapter 20, John wrote, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose for a little season. God's going to bind the devil in the, in, the lake, in, the lake, in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. He'll have no influence to deceive mankind in the millennium. Even though Christ will be there in the millennium, some people will still sin in the millennial reign. Uh, and what's going to happen, they're going to sin without the tempter. During the, millennial pe during the millennial kingdom, people can't say the devil made me do it because his influence will, will be bound in the bottomless pit. Quoting Dr. Dave Reagan from his book, uh, God's Plan for the Ages, he said this, yet at the end, this is at the end of the millennium, yet at the end, Satan is released. Most people will rally to him when he calls the nations to rebel against Jesus. Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 10. The millennium will prove that, that what man needs is not a new society, but a new heart. Even in the millennial kingdom, people will still accept Christ, those natural believers who come out of the tribulation into the millennium. They, they will still have to receive Christ uh, just like we do today. But some people won't receive Christ then. And what's going to happen, God's going to put them, Jesus going to put them in a perfect environment without the devil's temptation. And man will still sin during that time. Not only that, but they're going to they're gonna reject Christ even during the millennial kingdom while Christ is here. It's amazing. So what God's going to do at the end of the thousand year reign, God is going to release the devil from his prison. Look at verse seven. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sands of the sea. At the close of the millennial kingdom, it's going to be a great deception in the millennium, at the end of the millennium. These are people in the millennium kingdom who didn't accept Christ, who didn't worship him, and God's going to release Satan's influence back into the millennial kingdom, and it's going to expose the hearts of those men and women who have rejected Christ. Look at verse 9. And, uh, and went upon the breadth or the width of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Satan's going to have an army at the end of the millennium. Uh, many scholars call this Satan's last revolt. He's going to try to attack the millennial kingdom of Christ. But the Bible says God's going to rain fire down and he's going to judge them. But look at Revelation chapter 20, verse number 10. My favorite verse in the Bible. 
This is a, a verse that you need to write in your Bible, you need to highlight it, need to mark it, need to put it in the front pages. Because when the devil starts messing with you, start quoting this passage. Revelation 20, 10, look what it says. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. You know, this is the devil's end. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. And Revelation 20, 10 tells us that the devil is going to meet his eternal judgment. The devil's afraid of hell. He don't want you to know that, though. The devil wants you to be afraid of him. You know, fear is a type of worship. We don't fear the devil. We fear God. We reverence God. We don't fear the devil because fear is a type of worship. When you fear the devil, you're worshiping the devil. That's why I say, parents, don't let your kids watch horror movies to teach the devil how to fear him. Teach them how to fear God. That means you're going to walk and you're going to walk in reverence. You're going to respect God. You're going to respect God's laws. I fear God. I reverence him. Now, I'm not afraid of God, but I, I reverence him. Now, I don't fear the devil. I take authority over the devil in my house, in my life. You know, when I'm, 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 in, I'm in situations and, and, and me and my wife may have, a, have, a, have, a, have a, uh, a situation where we disagree. Any husband and wife disagree at times? Yeah. Is, is the Perkins house the only house that experienced that? <laughs> me and Sister Perkins, we have not having our little time, you know, and, and she says something that I don't like. And the devil cover my ears and say, tell her this. <laughs> and then I lob it back, skicking. And then the devil gets on her shoulder and say, tell him that. Skicking. And before long, man, we got a knockdown drag out. Let me tell you something. When the devil starts talking to you, you need to stop and analyze the voice that you're listening to. You know something? I've stopped a lot of uh, uh, battles in my home by just being quiet. There have been times, you know, my wife says something and the devil said, tell her this. I said, devil, you a lie in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that devil. I'm not going to tell my wife. You a lie, devil. Get the hints in Jesus' name. I do. I'm, I, I do this. And guess what? Guess what? Peace enters the home. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, Christians, you need to shut your mouth. The devil is a deceiver. And he's speaking to you. Tell her that. Tell him this. Tell your children this. Tell him that. No, 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 saints. No, no. We speak life. We speak, we speak life to our house, life to our families. You bind the devil. Take authority over the devil. Take authority over the devil. We serve a risen Savior, and Jesus is his name. God does not want you to be afraid of your enemy. He don't want you to be afraid of the devil. So from this day forward, saying, stand in your authority. If you got problems at your house, go home today and take authority over the devil in your house. Satan, I cast you out of my house. I cast you out of my house in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for the peace of God to rest in my house. Just pray like that. The devil got to go. <laughs> Hear me. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. This ain't no wish, wishful thinking. This ain't no name and claim it, bra blab it, grab it. No, no, no. I'm talking about the word, saints. The word of God. The authority that Christ has given every one of us. The devil is a defeated foe. And you need to know it. You need to stand in your authority and rebuke him.